very well put. The story actually I have right now is um, it's a true story. I've had, I haven't had that many jobs, but um, one of my favorite ones was that of a madam of a lovely little whorehouse on Park Avenue, some of you may remember. The story goes back to a simpler time when I worked at a now legendary brothel on 33rd Street. It was 1 a.m. in the three-story brothel where I worked. The night had settled into a peaceful, pleasant lull. Danny lay sprawled on the cover, overstuffed couch, her black lace teddy exposing her newly purchased breast. Jennifer, next to her, curled up like a cat, her long blonde hair extensions covering her face. Danny was so thrilled with her new breast, she used to be shy about nudity. She now readily hoisted up her top, offering a feel to any one of us, exclaiming how totally natural they looked. I'd grown so accustomed to these silicone balloons, I actually thought they looked natural, and my rather small handfuls God had planted on me, peculiar in contrast. The TV flickered, and two other women sat around the phone girl giggling and eating ice cream. It was a regular slumber party. We did each other's hair and nails or played with makeup while waiting for the next trick to enter our lair. Ow! Yeah. yeah, baby. The buzzer rang and Trixie the phone girl screamed, hurry up ladies, client. There was a quick flurry of manic movement. Danny and Jennifer leapt off the couch in unison, straightening their clothes and stockings. Large breasts were tucked back into place, a fluff of the hair, a once over with Aquanet, a spritz of body wash on the crotch, and we all came together as though choreographed in a straight line against the living room wall. I felt as though I was about to accept a Miss America award. Chest puff out, back straight, saccharine smiles, hand on hip, one leg in front of the other, when my eyes focused on the handsome male in front of us. Wow, well, not bad. I got a pang of shyness. Something I wouldn't have felt if this was one of the faceless, suited businessmen I regularly saw. Without looking at Danny on my left, I knew she was thinking the same thing because she pulled her lace teddy down to expose more cleavage. She licked her lips. We all stood there thinking the same thing. Damn, this man's hot. <laughs> we sometimes made remarks about obviously hot men, but not often. Under a mop of messy golden brown hair, he had dark eyes and a chiseled jaw. He made me nervous. Danny introduced herself while I thought, oh please God, not me, I don't want him to pick me. It's too embarrassing to fuck a guy I might see in my neighborhood. Someone I know I date. Someone, let someone else make the money. Don't let him pick me. Desiree introduced herself, then Jen, my turn. I didn't want to see him. He's way too cute. My face felt hot. I had stood staring at the wall behind him, the floor, anything but look at him. Well, that's what I tried to make him think. I stole a few glances here and there when I thought he wasn't looking. I said, I'm Lizzie, and I looked away. I didn't smile or look into his eyes on purpose. Then, without skipping a beat, he got up and said, OK, Lizzie, let's go. Fuck, I do it. I knew it. Damn, I knew he was going to pick me. Whenever I say so hello, though so I couldn't give a shit, they pick me. Every good whore knows that. <laughs> My mind drifted into dreamland. As though I couldn't give a shit, they picked me. We walked out of the room together. I took the lead, walking ahead of him, aware he was looking at my ass. I worried he's, he was going to have me swing from the chandelier. Not that we had a chandelier, but it was an expression I heard some of the women use when talked about a difficult session. Usually young, hot men who tried hard to prove something. First, that they didn't need to pay for it. Second, they can make a whore come. And third, that they didn't need to pay for it. <laughs> 
we reached room three, I flicked the light switch on the wall. The red bulb made little difference in the dark room. I slowly removed clothing that usually I ripped off in three seconds. What if this guy knows some of my friends? He looks like someone I date, someone from the East Village. I felt my face flush as I unsnapped my miniskirt and laid it carefully down on the chair. I thought about subjects to talk about. Maybe I could find out if he hung out at the same places. His hair was cut in a perfect messy shag, and those lips. I asked what he did. He told me he owned a construction firm in Jersey and lived in a new house he had just built. I acted impressed that he'd built a house. He didn't look like the usual construction guy that yelled at women in the street. I may believe I was impressed, but uh, I kind of pretended that I was. I really wasn't. I watched him pull his t-shirt and tight jeans off. I didn't see a wedding ring. I don't know why I was looking for a wedding band. I mean, who cares if this man client was married? Who cared what he did in his life? I fidgeted nervously. I would have to make up a lie about how we met and introduced him if I met family and friends. His body was solid, thick muscles with soft skin and hardly any body hair. He probably spends too t much time in the gym. That's no good. If he was always in the gym, I'd never see him. <laughs> I've never had a boyfriend who was in good shape or cared about health. All my boyfriends have been musicians and junkie artists of some sort. Anyway, what the hell am I thinking? Stupid. I scrunched my eyes shut, trying to block out these ridiculous feelings. I watched him bend down, reach into his jeans and pull out a wad of cash, a nice big wad. Even better, a boyfriend with a bunch of cash. He looked directly into my eyes and said, you're really gorgeous. Would you like to maybe hang out outside here sometime? I feel something with you. I really do like, we have a connection. I felt a hot flush on my bright ring. He got this devilish smile and softly touched my cheek, leaned forward and kissed me. I never kissed clients. But he smelled like baby powder and his lips felt good. I was melting. I'd never felt this before with a client. Um, yes, I'd like to see you outside. Outside in the real world. You know, I don't date clients, I said. But maybe you and me, maybe we have something, he repeated. Maybe this is my soulmate. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is the day I will meet my true love. I wouldn't have been so needy had I not had a huge row with my boyfriend who seemed very distant at that moment. My mind drifted into dreamland. I saw us t together telling friends, you'll never believe how we met. I imagined us holding hands, strolling through the city, then returning to a big open loft that was flooded with sunlight every morning. Laying in bed together, we'd read the Sunday Times and hold each other closely and begin our day making love. I felt his firm shoulders and arms that would hold me so protectively. I would never feel vulnerable again. His mouth divided mine, and I responded. I never closed my eyes while with the client, but this time I did. His skin felt so different to the older men I was used to, the ones I felt comfortable with. I ran my hand over his six-pack stomach and into his underwear. His cock was hard. He sighed when I touched him. What the hell? Would it really matter if I got off with this client? I squirmed when my boyfriend's face popped into my mind, a shower of guilt. I did have a boyfriend who I loved more than anything. We had good sex. Not as often as we used to. But that wasn't my fault. It was his increasingly large alcohol problem that put a damper on it. <laughs> Yet I'd never cheated on him, ever. And I would be cheating if I joined, enjoyed this session because work sex is so different than real sex. I was lying back on the bed when I heard him rip open the condom. We kissed and grabbed at each other. We began to fuck hard, rough, animalistic sex. In the distance, I heard yelling, arguing, 
coming from down the hall. I opened my eyes, it sounded near. It wasn't coming from out on the street. Who the hell was that? Nina would be really pissed off if she knew some girls were fighting and yelling. Why isn't the phone call telling them to be quiet? He continued ramming his cock into me, oblivious to the noise. I heard footsteps stamping up and down the stairs. I could tell by Eddie's face that he was just about to come when the door flew open. What the fuck? My first thought was anger at some bitch bursting into the room clearly in use. Then confusion. Naked and sweaty, I bolted upright. Eddie grabbed for a towel on the chair. You get the fuck up and put some clothes on now. A short, round man yelled at me. Eddie was on the other side of the room, already throwing his shirt on. I looked at the badge, swinging on a chain around the short man's neck. Everything went into slow motion. I was in shock. I reached for my bra and underwear, trying to cover myself up with my hands. Another undercover came into the room. I saw Eddie calmly walk towards the door, sipping his fly. Eddie, um, I'm so sorry, this rarely happens. <laughs> I tried to explain as he walked away. I was so embarrassed. I threw my mini skirt and bra and tight black top on. Oh, poor guy, was all I thought. Now he'll never come back to see me again. <laughs> Damn, I felt sorry for him. Would he get into trouble with the cops down there? I was led downstairs by some of the female cops. When I got into the living room, all the girls were swashed together on a couch, looking mighty upset and angry. I wanted to know who the undercover was with. It had to have been Danny. She stands out. So much you would be just like her to get picked by the cop. Oh, poor Danny. I squeezed in next to her on the couch. The place suddenly filled up with cops. They were buzzing around, going through our belongings and making crude jokes. They tossed everything onto the floor. They fucked the whole place up. No one was giving up any information. Definitely not me. We all sat defiant and pissed off. After hours of questions and detectives running around, I suddenly spotted Eddie walking casually into the living room with a cigarette dangling from the corner of his mouth. What the hell is he still doing here? The cops had let the clients go a long time ago. Oh, I know, he forgot something. <laughs> he hadn't said goodbye in all the confusion. I stared at him. He surged. I go from one to that very quickly. The sound in the room disappeared. Everything got fuzzy. Why the hell was my client holding handcuffs? He wouldn't look at me. Oh my God, I froze. Eddie, my dream man was a fucking cop. I couldn't breathe. Danny shook my arm. Lizzie, isn't that your client? She whispered. <laughs> I didn't answer. I yelled, Eddie! Hey, you, Eddie! A few cops stopped and looked at me. Eddie finally looked up and shrugged his shoulders and pursed his luscious lips tightly together and looked at the ground. The same lips that had been passionately kissing me, loving me, I couldn't believe it. He had been the undercover the dirty cop who had been making out with me, to think I'd been fantasizing about having him as a boyfriend, and now I was being locked up by him. I felt awful. I couldn't help but feel used and betrayed and completely humiliated. I wanted an explanation from him. Of course, he owed me nothing. But then again, we'd had a connection, hadn't we? Yeah. Thank you.